So, Bunny Man, where do we start with this? Honestly, what kind of story could be behind somebody they call Bunny Man? What did you think of the first time you heard the name Bunny Man? <laughs> I thought it was like some some weird version of the Easter Bunny, like <laughs> like your story from from way back about about the uh, the Easter Bunny that that you and your sister saw visiting your house and leaving chocolate eggs. My wife asked me about that when I mentioned that we were going to talk about Bunny Man, and it was weird. Oh, to think, really? <laughs> yeah, it was weird to think about again. It was, it was, it shouldn't have been that scary, but it was. Well, it, it's just unnerving because of of how weird it is, and the fact that it wasn't just you; it was it was corroborated by a second witness. And I still remember it as clear as yesterday. That's crazy, man. I think we got to stop DCing all these names like this. I mean, the only names like this that get a pass from me is Batman, Spider-Man, and Mothman. <laughs> Tired of the man shit. There's no other mans, damn it. Just imagine if they called Spawn Demon Man. I mean, like, fuck. <laughs> I wish they would. <laughs> he's he's the Demon Man. Mr. Melboja. <laughs> Do you think that the Bunny Man was pissed when he found out that people were calling him the Bunny Man? I don't know. It depends. <laughs> it depends on if he was really dressed as a bunny or not. God damn it! My name's the Death Rabbit, not Bunny Man. It's the Midnight Hair. <laughs> <laughs> the Midnight Hair. <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. The Midnight Hair. Yeah, that one's a little classy. But you guys have may have heard of the Bunny Man from the internet. But the truth is, reports of Bunny Man started before there was even a goddamn internet. Yeah. And a lot of people, especially in this day and age with the uh, with the creepypastas and things like that, the, the bunny man has kind of taken on a life of his own. And, and the, the story that is circulated now, I, the backstory for the bunny man is pretty much been confirmed to be a creepypasta. And, you know, it's one of those things that's just been made up. But it is based on some real events that happened. Yeah, the Bunny Man has gotten a lot more popular these days. I mean, there's Bunny Man video yeah. games and even a series of movies. Yeah. Have you seen any of them? I have not. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> yeah, I've I've heard they're, they're pretty not good. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. But I, I think... I think most likely what happened was the person that created the internet phenomenon of the bunny man, a person that goes by the name Timothy C. Forbes. Whether that's a pseudonym or not, I, I don't know. But um, his story was most likely based on, on this idea. Or, well, I shouldn't say idea, but the uh, original reports that, that occurred but he gave it a backstory and and made it into basically a, a horror movie archetype. Now, what date do you have as far as the internet version of Bunny Man goes? Well, the internet version it was posted to the internet in the nineties, um, but the story goes back to nineteen oh four. Damn, does that almost make it a little bit more believable for you that there's somebody dressed no. like a bunny? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> So, uh, well, all right. So, let since since the story of the Bunny Man, the 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 famous story that that is circulated on the internet and well known and loved, is this made up story by Timothy C. Forbes, and his story states that in 1904 there was a, a mental asylum in Clifton, Virginia, that was shut down. And the reason for it being shut down was due to the local people in the area petitioning for its closure. And and they had been pressuring the local government and gaining support among the people in the community to get this, this mental asylum closed down. So finally it was closed down and uh, Fairfax County 
was supposed to be moving the prisoners from this mental mental institution to a different place that was further away from Fairfax County. And on the way there, one of the 15 transport buses crashed and everyone, including the driver, was either killed or escaped. The, the driver was killed. Most of the inmates escaped. But 10 people that were on the transport ended up escaping. And a search party went, rounded them all up, and they found everybody except for two of them. And eventually they came across one of them who had been brutally murdered. And they never found the second one. The, that's one one telling of the story. A, another telling of the story is that the search party found everybody except for one of them. And there wasn't any weird, brutal murder. They just, there was one missing. Both stories agree that there was one inmate ultimately that ended up disappearing. And uh, during this time, people in the area began to find all these skin carcasses of animals, but it was predominantly rabbits that they found hanging from trees in the area. So the police went back in, they were searching everything, and they found the remains of this person named Marcus Walster. He was, he was hanging by this bridge, which has since become known as the Bunny Man Bridge. Yeah, I noticed that when I was doing research, there was more mentions of this Bunny Man Bridge than the mm. Bunny Man himself. I guess before this crash took place, the story I got that it, it was a bus carrying a load of these inmates from this mm -hmm. mental asylum and this oh it's an overpass called the colchester overpass yep and and that's an overpass for a train but uh, they the driver died they said all the inmates died except two the police went to look for them and they found just that one dude killed in pretty much the same way the rabbits were killed it made me think of that girl anna from the predator sometimes they were found without their skin yeah <laughs> they, they said that some of the rabbits had human bite bite marks on them chunks of their flesh min, missing that then they were in the shape of a human mouth and you know the, the same thing like you said they were able to round up everybody except the two and they even have a name for the inmate that they couldn't find that they blamed the bunny man stuff on yeah douglas griffin right yeah 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 and and then his backstory goes even further than that though like be beyond that, um, apparently he was in the institution because he killed his family, including his children, on Easter Sunday. Whoa. Yeah, so it ties it in with the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he's maybe a ghost, perhaps, because he was when the when the police were trying to arrest him, he was hit by a train. But when the train went by, they they heard him giggling. And now the story is if if you go to well, th there's two different versions of the story. One is if you go to the Bunny Man Bridge at midnight on any given night at midnight, the Bunny Man will take you and and hang you from the bridge. But then there's another legend that says only if you go on Halloween night will he, which doesn't make sense. Why would it be Halloween when he killed his family on Easter Sunday? But you know whatever, kids kids got to be kids. Yeah, I was reading an article that said that police to this day send extra patrols to this bridge on Halloween, be it by kids yeah. being thrill seekers or keeping an eye out for the bunny man. Mm -hmm. Either way, who knows? But it's kind of interesting, though, because the the, the bunny man, he's he's a urban legend in Virginia. But we talked about the goat man before whose story originates in Maryland, which they're, they're bordering states. So it seems kind of weird. One place has a goat man, one has a bunny man. But the goat man seems very different than, than the bunny man, especially when you look at the actual story behind it. You know, it's, it's not really anything supernatural. It, it sounds like it's just a weirdo. Didn't goat man carry an axe as well? Yeah. And and maybe you know from from a distance if you if you look, bunny ears could maybe be goat horns. Ooh, that's true. Dun dun dun. <laughs> now in the internet version, they don't make mention of an axe. They do make mention of the rabbits being skinned, but 
no mention of an X specifically. So I don't know the the yeah. horns thing, the X. Yeah, I don't, I, they're two different things. They describe the goat mm-hmm. man being huge and a monster instead of a person. So I think yeah. we can exclude them from each other. Yeah, safe to say. But it is interesting. It's just interesting coincidence. And because it's an interesting coincidence, I'm going to link them together and say they're the same goddamn creature. <laughs> Have you ever played the Bunny Man game? I didn't even know there was a Bunny Man game. Tell me about the game, Mateo. It's a, a game that was on Steam, and it's it's one of the lamer games that have probably ever been made. You just walk around this wooded area until you find a bridge, and then all of a sudden this dude dressed as a bunny, walking around carrying a small like hatchet, just slowly walks and chases you until he kills you, and that's the end of the whole game. But even that idea to me is pretty fucking lame. So the game is ultimately to make sure your character gets killed by the bunny man. Yeah. That sounds like a shit game. It is. It'll even like, if you get away, it'll teleport to where he's around the corner and you take two steps and he's there walking real slow towards you. It's just all cheesy to me. Now, in in the game though, is it a, a bunny man like, like Donnie Darko style or is it a man in a bunny suit? It's a man in the bunny suit. He's got like work boots on and you can see his like coverall sleeves sticking out of the bunny man costume. Oh, well, that's kind of lame. It is. I almost wish bunny man was like a nine foot tall rabbit. Like the one I saw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. Like just this big brutish bunny monster. I would love that. Those things can kick like a motherfucker. Fuck yeah, they can, man. I used to have a pet <laughs> rabbit. And and if you didn't support its legs when you picked it up, that thing would kick. And God damn it, those those claws were ruthless. <laughs> that sucks. I've been trying to convince my wife to let me get a rabbit for a while now. Rabbits are pretty. Dude, rabbits are awesome. They, you, you, they can learn their names. You can fucking litter train them. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, my, my rabbit was litter trained. We let him hop around our basement. He had free reign of our basement. And he would... Uh, only go in his his area. You just put down some some cedar chips, and they they prefer to go in the same area. That's the only thing you have to worry about is them gnawing on stuff. That has to be annoying. Yeah, it is because they gnaw on everything. But they're so cute and cuddly. Now, before we get into Bunny Man in reality, if you were somewhere, let's say with one or two other friends, and you saw a guy in a bunny suit. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe holding an axe or not. I mean, how would you take that? I, I just see like the old classic 80s horror movies when the people are like, look at this asshole. Hey, dickhead, what are you doing here? And he chops all their fucking heads off. But I don't well, I mean, I, I wouldn't be doing anything along those lines. I, <laughs> I, I mean, typically speaking, bunny suit or not, if a guy's carrying around an axe in a situation where there shouldn't be an axe involved, I'm I'm going to be a little leery of that particular character and then you add in something weird like a bunny costume or or creepy face paint or a hockey mask and i'm all about not being near where that guy is yeah i will say that a bunny costume is way scarier than those pricks that were wearing the clown costumes going around yeah that would make me a little bit more but but i mean it's the same thing it's just like like oh man it's it's some guy dressed up in some weird costume and he's got a weapon and it's really creepy because those things don't go together. (laughs) I don't know. For some reason to me, I I would want to beat the shit out of a guy in a clown suit more than a guy in a bunny suit. (laughs) I don't know. It's the same thing to me, whether it's clown bunny or a guy in a little Caesars costume. I don't care. (laughs) I usually have a knife on me. I'd I'd tell a guy in a clown suit. Hey, fucko. Hey, you want me to fuck your gut with my knife? (laughs) And that guy's like, oh, shit, you're crazy. And you're goddamn right I am. Yeah, I'll show you something scary. Run. <laughs> well, there are some reports of Bunny Man that are actually true. And yeah. we should make mention, as far as the internet version goes, there's some internet sleuths who did some investigating. And there's even some historians from the Virginia area that looked in a Bunny Man. And they were able to prove that there was no mental hospital around that area in 1904 or so. Yeah, they like, and there was no person by by the name of uh, what's his name. <laughs> Griffin. There's no person. There's no person by the name of Douglas Griffin 
there was never a man who was found hung and skinned. You know, there's just not nothing in the story adds up. But then to perpetuate that, they say that it's all a cover up because they don't want to to be known for the bunny man. So they just completely erased everything. But that seems weird considering that we have actual evidence of a bunny man character from the 70s. So if they're trying to cover it up, don't you think they would erase all ties to it? Why would they let the the story come out in the 70s that would remind people of what happened in 1904? Yeah. But these historians also did uncover these two cases of actual bunny man attacks. Like you said, this was the 1970. The first one took place on October 19th. And it's the classic story of a young couple who parked right next to the bunny man bridge to get some making out done. And after a few minutes, uh, they described a man dressed in white with something that looked like tall rabbit ears on his head. He attacked their car, smashing their front windshield with an axe. And it's interesting, when they sped away, they actually found the axe on the floorboard of the passenger side of the car. So that, that, that actually happened. And one thing that was interesting about the case is that the girl did tell the police that his costume could have been a KKK outfit. And she didn't link it to a rabbit right away. But but her her boyfriend did say that it looked like he had big bunny ears. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's kind of an interesting aspect as well, is that independently, uh, Robert Bennett said that it looked like a man wearing bunny ears, but his fiance did say it looked like a KKK hood. Oh, and, no, KKK members running around in 1970. I mean, it's, it's, it's Virginia. <laughs> yeah, in in Virginia doesn't seem yeah. like a far fetch. No, and and especially he was telling them that they're on private property and that they shouldn't be there and and they're trespassing and you know this guy was apparently really against people trespassing even though he himself was trespassing because he did not own that property either. <laughs> The hell he didn't. He's like, I'm the buddy man. This is my yeah. bridge. But I mean, is it is it too out of the way to think that this may have just been some drunken clansman? It it could it could be, but just I mean, in 1970, I mean, it seems it seems I mean, it's it's Virginia though. Very true, but it seems more believable of somebody dressing like a bunny costume in 1904 than it does 1970, and actually assaulting, you know, some kids you know, smashing in their window like that. I mean, I mean, the kids went right to the police and the police came and they couldn't yeah. find anything, but still. But it, it could have been just some drunken guy though. You know, he just got drunk, left his clan hood on, <laughs> threw an X <laughs> at the car. Smashes your windshield, they speed off and he's all, God damn, oh shit, I forgot I had this on. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know he's drunk. He's, he's all wasted and shit. <laughs> But but it happened again though, I, like ten days later, there yeah. was there was a second report. There was a security guard named Paul Phillips that that saw this guy standing on the porch of an unfinished house. Yeah, he was guarding and, a bunch of construction, yeah, properties. And he he said the guy that he saw was wearing a gray, black, and white bunny costume. Oh shit! He stepped it up in the seventies. Yeah, went to Party America. Yeah, gray, black, and white bunny costume. And he estimated that he was in his early 20s. He stood about 5 feet, 8 inches tall. He didn't say if that was at the head or at the ears, though. <laughs> but he he said that, that this man began chopping at one of the posts on the porch with his axe, saying, all you people trespass around here. If you don't get out of here, I'm going to bust you on the head. <laughs> And so, so keep in mind, this is 10 days later. He just threw an ax through somebody else's window and here he is with another ax. So clearly this guy is loving the ax and hating people that trespass. And he considers all property, his property. Yeah, it's his, it's his property and he'll chop it with his ax if he wants to. Well, the interesting point in this case is that this, this construction worker security guard called the police and they investigated and couldn't find anything, but they were out there for a few hours. 
and it's reported during the investigation, police received almost 50 more calls about mm-hmm. a man dressed as a bunny wielding an axe. Yeah, and then some people reported seeing a man in a bunny costume eating a cat. Oh, shit. Yeah. I don't know. If, if you're going to do something dumb to where the, the police are going to be called, how easy it just to remove the bunny suit and like mm-hmm. take it easy for a night? It kind of makes me think that this person was more mentally ill than some psychopathic killer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But the, I, the, there's lots of evidence that points to it. There were a bunch of newspapers and, and prominent ones that the Washington Post reported on it. Yeah, that was an interesting detail. That even the Washington Post ran a story about both of these attacks. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I guess it would probably feel the same way when all those clown people were doing the same thing, but... Anyway, I wonder if he, how scary it would be if he actually killed somebody, if the town would go into a panic. Like, fuck, there's a fucking bunny man killing people. Yeah. As far as the clown things go, I, the only thing I read was that a couple of them got their asses kicked instead of hurting anybody at all. Yeah, a lot of the, the reports of these of the clowns that took place a few years ago, there there was never really any evidence. A lot of people were reporting seeing clowns in the woods that were trying to lure kids in. And um, there was never any, no one ever found who these clowns were that were trying to do that. But I, I heard something that, that similar events took place multiple times in history, but there's no reports of the, of clowns actually uh, abducting anyone or hurting anyone. But every few years, this thing springs up where these people dress in clown costumes and try to lure kids into the woods. And it's it's most likely pranksters just trying to to perpetuate like a a Pennywise type of myth or something. Yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying that it was just some type of hype they were trying to create for that it movie coming out. Mm-hmm. But there was a few like home security cameras that did catch people dressed as clowns walking around people's houses. I remember seeing one video to where one of the people was on somebody's porch, and it was near Halloween which lessens the credibility of the situation, but they were just smashing their pumpkins and staring at the camera and just looked like some dorky ICP fan with nothing better to do. Yeah. Yeah. Which is most likely the case. And the way things are now with how everybody wants to get famous by posting shitty ass prank videos, it's understandable now, but I think we covered a little bit of the the clown thing when it was going on. And I remember reading about how in England, that it would happen like periodically every four years, there'd be reports of clown people. And that's a little, I mean, since the seventies, they were doing it, you know, before there were prank videos, I guess, unless they were trying to just film it for their own amusement, show their friends a dumb video. I wouldn't say that's all that's out of the question. Nah. Goddamn kids. It's just so dumb. It's a quick way to get your face shot off. If there was a clown on my porch at two in the morning and it was smashing shit on my porch and I saw it, I would not hesitate, ask, or shout any warning. I would go out there with a baseball bat and fucking cave in his skull, period. Well, I got it on that, camera. That, that's a little crazy. Fuck that I, shit. I might, I might start with asking, excuse me, but what do you think you're doing? <laughs> not me, sir. Yeah. I would say, I'll call you an ambulance. <laughs> I've already called you an ambulance. It's just you and me, tiger. <laughs> the cops were on their way, but... I don't think they're going to be much help for you, shitbag. The cops are on their way, but you're still fucked. But I'm not doing anything. You're smashing my pumpkins, you son of a bitch. You're on my property. Trespasser. (laughs) Get off my yard, you goddamn kids. Yeah. I would totally turn into the bunny man and pull out an axe and start hitting the floor and be like, You're on my property. (laughs) Oh, you trespassers. I'm going to bash you on the head. Before doing research for the show, I was aware of the movies and the video game. Mm. Obviously, I played it. But uh, it was weird to find that there were actual Bunny Man attacks. It, well, I, I think that's because of the uh, the creepypasta. And I think that's what a lot of people are aware of is the the story online and all the variations of that story. And, and because of that and because it's pretty well known at this point that it's all made up it's just a a cool story that uh people just assume anything regarding the bunny man 
is is fake. But the the whole thing with the Bunny Man Bridge, that's that is all fake. The this guy has the the original story has nothing to do with the Bunny Man Bridge. The Bunny Man Bridge was part of this made up story. Yeah, and he definitely could have known about the actual reports. Guy, yeah, just yeah. just the one detail of the the young couple pulling over next to this overpass to make out. He could have just elaborated and embellished everything else. But I definitely thought it was creepy pasta. Like I said, anything that ends with a man is usually creepy pasta these days. Slender man. Yeah. Well, it's I and I I think even like Slender Man and things like that. They they're not entirely original. They're a lot of them are are based on some form of of legend, whether it be mythological or or an urban legend. Be, because the the story the internet story is um it takes place in the same area they just added this this background to it because clearly like you said this guy the 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 bunny man from the 70s is clearly someone who's insane um the the, the thing that that i think is is weird though is is it would have been a lot easier for the person who wrote the story to make up a story centering around like the late 60s and and tied it to the 1970s bunny man and the, the fact that he didn't i think is a missed opportunity for him i think that he could have uh, made a, a much more believable story had he incorporated it into the actual events instead of making it seem like he's some ghost bunny that just hangs people from a bridge that has nothing to do with the original bunny man things yeah when you hear about the bunny man and if you are inclined to do research on it like we did for the show you know you're telling me that the the same dude from 1904 is at the ripe age of like what 60 something late 60s is still donning the bunny man costume and fucking with people yeah it doesn't make sense maybe he passed the mantle on to his grandkids you got to protect our property with this bunny suit where's our property grandpa Wherever you can see, that's our property, boy. Here's here's the family axe, and you go out and you protect our property. We come from a long line of midnight hares. <laughs> they call us bunny men. We know better. We're the midnight hare society. <laughs> we need to scare the shit out of people until they start calling us by the proper name. We need to bash their heads, because that's what we do. You trespass. You get your head bashed. <laughs> now let me chop my porch in peace. It is interesting. There hasn't been a reinsurgence of Bunny Man sightings. Does that make it think make you think that it was just one solo dude? Absolutely. It was just some. I I guarantee you it was some drunk, and that's all it was. Some drunk dude who got really tipsy, got confused, and went out with his trusty axe to go chop some porches. What a shitbird. Yeah. And he spawned this this huge legend that's largely bullshit. I wonder with like serial killers, he got off on the fact that it was actually reported in newspapers. He's like, my work is done. Now they know. I, I don't think so. Because I think if that was the case, we would have seen a lot more of him. You know, there, there were only two incidents, and yet 50 people ended up reporting him around the time of the second one. But I think that was all tied to the same drunken bender that this dude went on. <laughs> yeah, he probably woke up and saw the paper articles and went, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. And his wife's like, Cletus, give me your bunny suit. You're not going out anymore. <laughs> and then and then they went and they burned the the bunny suit in the backyard and that's why he's never been seen again this is wife trashed his costume yeah because cletus gets drunk and puts on the bunny costume and quite frankly betsy is not a fan of it and uh <laughs> she, she's about headed up to here with with cletus and his bunny suit wearing ways and you know one of these days it's going to be her or the bunny suit and uh, once it started getting reported in the papers, she's like, she she finally drew the line. And on that day, Cletus gave up the bunny suit. He didn't give up the beer, though. <laughs> maybe the, he, the PBR stays strong in Cletus. Maybe in 1904, she made him go to rehab and he fell off the wagon in the 70s. Oh, no, this is, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ni- 1904. He murdered his family, was going on a prison transport when when there was an accident and he escaped and promptly got drunk on lots and lots of PBR, met Betsy. And then they <laughs> hung out and they they were they were, you know, they were drinking buddies throughout the the 50s and 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 60s and they started to get into drugs a little bit in the late 60s and then 1970 comes and and they've they've about had their fill of of psychedelics and they want to they want to just you know take it easy and just drink beer but cletus of course as cletus always did took it too far (laughs) and uh since he already killed his family he's like i just need to drink the pain away and wear a bunny costume. I don't see what the big deal is. Betsy at first finds it endearing. She's like, "Oh, look, you're you're drunk and you're wearing a bunny costume, and isn't that cheeky and fun?" And uh, as as the years go on, she starts to realize that maybe this isn't so cheeky and fun, and and maybe maybe Cletus is a little messed up. Maybe he likes that bunny costume a little too much. And then he starts carrying the axe around with the bunny costume, and then she starts getting a little freaked out because. I mean, let's be let's be honest. Guys, guys wielding axes in a bunny costume is a little unnerving. It's not something that you would normally see, especially and if they're shit faced. Especially if they're shit faced, he starts brandishing the axe, swinging it about, and then he went around the neighborhood and started chopping porches, and it got reported. Fifty people saw. Him. Betsy was mortified because everybody knows Betsy and Cletus. Betsy and Cletus. Luckily, he was wearing the bunny costume, so they didn't know it was Cletus. But let's be honest, anyone that really knows Cletus knew it was Cletus. Wearing the old bunny costume, chopping porches. Oh, that's just Cletus again down the street, drank too many PBRs. So Betsy just got fed up, and she said, Listen, Cletus, sick your shit. I'm trying to lead a stable life. Drink my PBR in peace. And you're out here wearing a bunny suit, chopping porches, and it's bullshit. <laughs> Get so either of get rid of the bunny suit, <laughs> either get rid of the bunny suit, or take that bunny suit and shove it up your ass, because I'm sick of it. So he uh, burned the bunny suit. She confiscated his axe, and uh, they they live the rest of their life drinking PBR in Fairfax County. What if alcohol made him transform like a werewolf into a bunny man? He slaughtered Betsy because she didn't want him to drink anymore. He's like, bitch, I cut my own kid's head off. You're my second <laughs> wife, you bitch. <laughs> you dumb bitch. Don't you know I killed my family? You don't tell me what, you don't tell Bunny Man what to do. Yeah, he chopped up Betty, then went on the run. And then he knew. No more beer, no more Bunny Man. Or he's going to get locked up in the mental asylum again. So he, he killed Betsy and then ditched the Bunny Man. And then moved to Maryland and started wearing goat horns. Yeah. He's like, I'm a goat man now. You'll never tie me back to bunny man. I'm goat man, damn it. <laughs> he just picks a different farm animal every time he needs to move on. Yeah, as he as he moves further and further north, he just picks different animals. <laughs> By the time he gets up to Maine, he's like, I'm I'm moose man. I'm a I'm a man that's that's also a moose. And I still carry a fucking axe. And I got an axe. And I hate porches and trespassers. <laughs> and if you're trespassing on my porch, I will chop my porch and threaten you. God damn it. That had to be a little weird for that security guard. I mean, you could probably run into fucking <laughs> kids sitting out there smoking pot. Yeah. Fucking yeah. skateboarding or some shit. And then there's some prick in a fucking bunny costume with an axe. He's probably like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Why, why are you chopping that porch, sir? What did that porch ever do to you? Get off my property. It's my property. I'll chop it if I want to. Yeah, according to the report I read, that security guard told him to piss off. I don't think I, I would have done that. <laughs> yeah, just well, the he's, cops. He's, he's chopping porches. <laughs> he's chopping the goddamn porch like it's a tree. You don't chop porches, Mateo. You just don't. <laughs> it's rude, especially when it's not your porch. I mean, come on. It's just You're just being a jerk, and everybody knows it. Fucking Cletus the Bunny Man, he don't give a shit, though. His hatred for porches and his love for PBRs and the need to carry on the Bunny Man bloodline outgrew his 
fear of arrest or it didn't stop him from killing Betty. I'm the bunny man, damn it. I'll kill whoever I damn well want. Woman, are you saying I can't go out and kill people? I'll cut your goddamn head off. God damn it, bitch. I'll kill you. And then I'll kill everybody else while wearing my bunny costume, drinking my PBR. And I won't even spill a drop. <laughs> my PBR, that is. Just spilling lots of blood. My bunny costume. If any of our listeners are from Virginia, please record yourself saying, Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> I'm the goddamn bunny man. <laughs> I do what I want. Oh, God, I hope we get people that, that actually do that. That'll that'll be the opening to the very next show if you guys can do <laughs> Hey, look, if you're not even from Virginia, just record yourself saying that in that accent. Yeah. Bunny man, god damn it. So what's the next man we'll see, do you think? Creepy pasta or no? I'm I think I think creepy pasta man is long overdue at this point. <laughs> he just wears like a black suit with a bunch of pasta hanging out of his sleeves. Yeah. Like he wears a black cloak and the sleeves go over where his hands would be and it goes over where his face is. And coming out of the hood, like you look into the hood and it's all black, but coming out is this creepy, stringy, wet, gray pasta. And then he lifts his arms up and coming out of the sleeves is the same creepy, wet, gray pasta. And it, and it drips water. And sometimes he <laughs> slaps you in the face with, with it. And and at first you think it's tentacles, but then he's like, no, well, I'm creepy. That's not fingers. That's rigatoni. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'd whip his ass. I think I'd let him go. Especially if he's just slapping out <laughs> pimp hand slaps. Yeah. Oh, Some wet noodle it. slaps. <laughs> it's only a wet noodle. No big deal. Yeah, I don't think we'll see anything like that anytime soon in this day and age with the repertoire of, of a lot of police forces is just shoot fucking people now so i didn't know what it was i was scared for my life i swear it was pasta man <laughs> all i saw was spaghetti and i got so scared i had to shoot it <laughs> i ain't letting them slap me for shit i hate linguini damn it <laughs> so i shot him dead so i shot that linguini right in the face yeah it'd probably be some 16 year old kid who loves 4chan playing a prank <laughs> cops like god damn it i killed a youngin got him i got the flying spaghetti monster damn it <laughs> it's what you get for making fun of my god <laughs> they remove the hood from the dead body and it's a 16 year old well shit that ain't no flying spaghetti monster <laughs> tell my granddad i couldn't carry on the mantle of bunny man so i made pasta man cletus is in the afterlife going you fucking idiot should have stuck with the midnight hair you ain't no son of mine pasta boy <laughs> <laughs> uh, man i i feel like we're we're really painting a, a we're, we're perpetuating a terrible stereotype of of the southern people and and i apologize it's it's not all southern people it's just cletus and and his and his family yeah they stayed trapped in time from 1904 and they still talk like that unless 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 you know you you are like that in which case you're probably a descendant of Cletus and and a homicidal bunny person. Yeah. And that's, you know, I mean, do you, do what you got to do, but know that this is directed right at you. We're calling you out. We're calling you out, bunny people. <laughs> I don't even care if you're not from Virginia. If you're a bunny people, I'm calling you out. I'll take pasta man, you take bunny man. All right, that sounds fair. And then afterwards we can make dinner with both of them. <laughs> You remember Monster Squad? Even Wolfman had nards. Just kick Pasta Man right in the junk. <laughs> uh, what would Pasta Man have for a junk, though? Meatballs. Some meaty balls. <laughs> yep. Right in the old lasagna and meatballs. Pasta Man would be probably like located somewhere in New York, huh? Like Brooklyn what, or what something. What are you saying? What are you saying, Matteo? That's where they got are the good Italian we, food. You're saying New York is filled with pasta monsters? That's painting with a broad brush, my friend. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a pasta man from Delaware. What do they know about pasta? Oh, well, I don't know anyone from Delaware. But I think that's also painting with a broad brush, assuming that Delawareans don't know about pasta. <laughs> I've watched the Food Network. I never see no goddamn pasta in Delaware. I'll have you know Guy Fieri is from Delaware, goddammit. 
<laughs> He's the fucking pasta man. His bleached spikes aren't linguini. It's just his hair. It's just his hair. Yeah. He just runs Are up you? to people. He's like, have you tasted me? You should taste, <laughs> taste me. this hair. It's delicious. <laughs> it's like Mr. Perfect. He's got, he had, he had ramen noodle hair. It was glorious. <laughs> So I guess in closing, guys, if you see a bunny man or a pasta man, go for the crotch. Yeah. And don't and don't be a, a jerk neck and go to the, the bunny man bridge, especially on Halloween, because all you're going to do is annoy the, the cops that are trying to actually direct traffic. It's a well, it's a it's an area that's got a lot of traffic. There's trains that regularly use the overpass. And cars go through the tunnel and, uh, you know, in addition to being haunted by a creepypasta bunny man that'll hang you and skin you and eat your toes or something. What if the bunny man was a cop? And that's why they post there to this day during Halloween. Ooh. What if they're not really cops? What if it's like some secret government agency protecting the public from the bunny man without admitting to the bunny man's existence they know that the bunny man will murder the fuck out of anyone that goes through that bridge on halloween (laughs) so they've got to stay there to make sure that people don't go near it under the guise of making sure that traffic patterns remain normal but they know if they admit that there's really a bunny man there that it's going to create panic and cause craziness and people are going to want to come and then they gotta just deny just like the ufo cover-up you deny the bunny man's existence, but let the stories float out there just enough to create deniability. Yeah, you send a couple agents out there dressed as mm-hmm. bunny man every other mm-hmm. Halloween and try to keep the kids away. Yeah, every now and again you murder someone and <laughs> bite a rabbit in half. Yeah, hang him from the fucking tunnel and just perpetuate that myth, baby. Keep it going. Murder and bunnies. Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast? Get yourself a Whatcast t-shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links and homies page. All this and more can be found at www.thewhatcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.